how to set up and configure your Konica Press 6000, 7000, 8000 series. Now you got a brand new machine, you want to put it up on the network. Uh, this is what you have to do. Uh, once either the technician or your IT has put in the IP address on the Konica Press, there's a couple things you have to do on the configuration of the Fire so it works properly. Now, if you haven't installed your command workstation, uh, you could download that through Fiery. Again, that is a, that is a free download. You could search for EFI Fiery, which is EFI space F-I-E-R-Y. Once you, the first hit should, hit should be EFI Fiery. And once you get to the website, you know, you're gonna have a link that says Fiery Command Workstation, download it. It does take some time. It is a large file, download it. I prefer to use the Command Workstation. It works much faster. Or you could actually use the web browser. I'll open up internet browser, type in the IP address on your address bar, just the IP numbers, get that information from your IT. Once you get that IP, get to, get to the tab that says configure and launch the configuration. Uh, you're going to see this icon right here, just launch it. It's going to give you a pop-up with the configuration. Now, again, I do like to use my command workstation. I'm going to show you how this is done to the command workstation. Once you log in, you can actually search for the Fiery. I already have mine installed, so if need be, you could click on the green uh, plus icon here, search for it. Once you search, connect to it, log into the Fiery, the default password for the Fiery. It's the administration, administrator mode. Default is uh, capital F I E R Y dot one. So that's the default password. So once you're in here, you're going to get to the tab that says Device Center. Once you're in Device Center, click on Configure right at the bottom. You know, click on Configure. Give that a give that a couple seconds. It's going to give you a pop up. Here it goes. Now we are logged in to the Command Workstation Fiery Controller option. So this is how the Fiery gets configured, so it works properly on your network. So once we're in here, you know, click on your server option. First thing you want to do, click on General make sure the time is correct here so click on set configure your time look at the time there are many fires where the time is off by 10 12 hours that is not good so make sure the time is correct on the fire and it works it's working properly once you do that click ok once that's done make sure you apply those settings right here also enable your remote desktop there is a way you can actually remotely connect to that fiery and i will show that in a minute show you that in a minute do some additional uh, advanced features. So make sure you're an enable remote desktop. That's enabled, that is checked. The next step you wanna do is basically, you wanna go into your network settings. Once you go into your network settings, basically you wanna go to your ports, ethernet, make sure you have this option connected, the 10, 100, 1000 uh, megabytes auto detect ethernet speed. Make sure that's there, apply the setting, save it. Then you're gonna go into your protocol, when I go into TCP IP and double check for your settings, Ethernet settings. Make sure if you dynamically and if the fire picked up something dynamically, come in here, put it to manual. Make sure DNS is also in your gateway set to manual. Type in all the information, apply those settings. Your DNS also. Make sure you have the correct DNS in here. Apply the settings. If you have a Win server, so we get put the information in here. Apply the settings. Now into your services. The only thing I would suggest you go in here if you are going to use to scan to email. Here are your settings. Click on scan. Type. Put in the correct information. I do have a video how to set up the scan to email. Take a look at that, so you can see how that works. Now the next step will be is basically you want to go into your printer settings. You want to go into general. Make sure these options are all turned on. And then you want to go into your PDL settings. Postscript settings. Now you want to make sure on the PDL settings here at the bottom, Postscript, make sure the paper type is set to plain. Uh, we have seen that if you leave this to plain, uh, it's best to have it because the fire would detect if you're printing from any size paper, it will pretty much print to the fiery. Uh, and this way you could have other options to print to different size paper. Uh, so basically the courier substitution is yes, print to Postscript error. I would say no. Yeah, um, you can leave that turned off, leave it to no in it. But the critical one again is the paper type. Make sure it's set to plain. Paper color is white. Punch paper, no. If you can have it, yes. If not, leave it to no. By default, it should be set to not punch. Paper weight, uh, this is another option. We do suggest you go from 80, 81 to 100, uh, 105 GM tube. 
especially the the weight of the paper the fire likes to see that's that, that weight paper that's pretty much by default it works much properly at this way default paper size at us print cover page you want to say no scale to fit make sure this is set to up if you leave it on what's going to do is the fire is going to work harder it's going to it's going to take longer to print so by default that will leave it off uh conversion conversion convert paper size sizes i will leave it no you don't want to do that color mode leave it at cmyk offset jobs now this is something that basically if you have a finisher connect to the fire fiery you want to go ahead and push put it on put it on that means every job every other job every other job that it prints it will be offset on the finisher uh us pdf leave it off print master that should be no once you do that click apply once you have your settings you have your configuration settings make sure you reboot the fire reboot say yes and again it will take five to seven minutes for that fire to start up and running again once you reboot say yes now i'm going to show you a quick demonstration how to remotely connect to that fiery so if you have remote desktop on your computer you can actually remotely connect to that fiery uh controller on the back of the machine i'm gonna log into my fiery through a remote desktop now we're going to take a look that here we go it's basically a basically a windows xp login option but you know use the same one as the administrator you're going to go to password is f i e r y dot one so it'll be administrator fiery dot one capital f go ahead and log in once i log in as you can tell i am in the fiery control i am now remotely connected to my controller box on the back of that copier so i can take a look some specific setting is using a basic xp settings one thing i do recommend click on start right click on my computer properties you go in here the system actually i will actually go into my automatic update make sure this is turned off um I, you probably know microsoft is not going to be putting uh, windows xp come 2014 so turn it off you don't need the updates on this fire this fire is the only thing it does is basically it's a print controller it does nothing else so it, make sure the turn turn off the automatic updates make sure it's off if you leave it on it's going to store updates and your fire most likely is going to be rebooting every other week so turn it off you don't need it on make sure to save those settings also the fire does have an automatic uh update so if you click on start all programs fire system update if you want to take a look if the fire has all the updates you can actually again start all programs and set fiery system update you can actually at the moment i have this turned off because i do not want the fire making updates and booting by itself so i like i like to check those on my own so i could check now here at the bottom see if it needs any updates it goes out to the network to the internet it finds out if they if it has if it does need any updates on the fire and if it does uh, if it does i'll go ahead and install those updates so uh so it looks like this fire needs, needs a few updates and that could be done some of these fires are some prereqs that means that you need to install one update to get another update to work so i do suggest do a couple at a time check a couple boxes at a time install it if it tells you that you cannot install because you need another update uncheck it and do another update instead um keep in mind once this is done some of these updates will reboot the fire rate, so you have to reboot it but if uh, if the fire is working fine, nothing is going on, you don't have to do the updates. But if you have some time, check in the updates, download the updates, especially the critical updates, download them, put them on the fire rate, and the fire will work much more efficiently. Okay. Once that's done, I could pretty much, I could get out of the fire rate option. Let's log off out of here, start log off. And that's how you to remotely connect to your fire control and look into the advanced features of the fire and that's the way you configure your fire uh, get the network connection your ip address properly on the fire and your configurations are properly configured thank you